Matt McAvanaugh was trying to come up with a name for his new youth lacrosse club, and his first thoughts drifted to his town's pretty waterfront location. But the harbor theme paled in comparison to his next idea. We were looking for an identity, and, uh, and we found it in the rich history in coopering and uh, bucket making, actually, in the town here. Bucket Town Lacrosse was born, complete with Bucky, the team mascot. The kids are all in. They love it. Uh, you can see from their shorts, the shorts are actually buckets also. Um, it's something that brings them together. One, two, three, Bucket Town! Indeed, this town claims to be unsurpassed in its bucket-making prowess. Could any other town have been Bucket Town, or were you special in that way? We were special in that way. We really did shine in, in the area of buckets. Deirdre Anderson of the local historical society reports that in 1800, there were no fewer than 60 coopers, or bucket makers, in this one small town. The demand was that great. Think of it as the modern day Tupperware, where they held solids, they held liquids, they were used for farming, they were used for storage inside the house. Alas, the demand for wooden buckets would plummet with the coming of metal pails and cardboard boxes. But if the honorable craft of coopering went the way of, well, the buggy whip, then how to explain what this guy is doing in his garage? We're making buckets from probably up to the 17th century all the way up till 1950s. I had the trade from my, my grandfather passed it down to me and here I am today with a bunch of buckets just waiting to be waiting to be sold. Bill Hersey comes from one of the oldest families around these parts, the Ancestral Family Dairy Farm, also the site of a small workshop where generations of Hersey's made buckets. Oh, it's, it's my family legacy. It's something I pass on to my children. The buckets are still made the old fashioned way. Each bucket requires about eight hours of hands-on labor. Small wonder, Hersey is just about the last Cooper still plying the trade. Yes, I am. One of the one of the last. Hersey owns a contracting business to pay the bills, but keeping this family tradition alive. Yeah, it's everything. Is clearly his passion. It means a lot to me. It might seem contradictory to withhold the name of our next nickname puzzler. After all, this handsome village has a tradition of complete transparency. Welcome to Glass Town, where glass is so highly esteemed, it's got its own museum. I'm Mary Childs. I'm the executive director of this beautiful glass museum here in this lovely seaside town in Massachusetts. The museum showcases exquisite glassware, colonial to contemporary. The reason this town is known as Glass Town? It was the site of the first industrial scale glass manufacturer in the U.S. Today, the factories are gone, but not the glass making. I grew up in my whole life. And it's just weird that I ended up being a glassmaker in Glasstown. David McDermott says he was just a clueless teenager when he first witnessed someone working with a blob of molten glass. I had no idea how glass was made, whether it was mined, whether it came off of trees. And to see that happen in front of me, my jaw hit the floor. 51 years later, my jaw is still on the floor. McDermott has gone on to produce fine art pieces that have found their way into museums like the MFA and the Met. But make no mistake, this is a team effort. He, wife, Yukimi, and colleagues engage in a sophisticated dance with its own rhythm and flow. It's like one person just moving around. Nobody has to say a word to each other. That's half the pleasure of working in glass is having everybody work together. It can get to the point where it's, you almost get giddy. I hate to sound like Lou Gehrig, but I am the luckiest human being on the planet. Just absolutely lucky. 
Now, sand is a key ingredient in the manufacture of glass, and you heard the museum mm -hmm. director say that Glass Town is a seaside location. So it would make sense that that's where the mm -hmm. sand would come from for the glass making. That is not the case. <laughs> uh, the local sand has too many impurities to be made into glass, so they actually import sand from both New Jersey and the Berkshires as well, none of which helps you figure out what town we're in. <laughs> So stay tuned. <laughs> Coming up, when the nickname starts with worm.